In this last lecture, <clears throat> we're going to discuss uh, how one can use Laplace transform to solve systems of um, first order ODEs. And <clears throat> let me just show you a few examples. So let's say example one. Uh, I want to solve uh, the following system of equations uh, x prime is equal to 2x plus 3y and y prime is equal to 2x plus y and let's suppose that um, not only we're solving the system, but we also have some initial conditions. Uh, so maybe, in particular, uh, let's say x of 0 is going to be x0, y of 0 is going to be y0. Uh, so that means that um, I'm attempting to find a general solution of my ODE, right, because I have not really specified the initial conditions, x0 and y0 can be uh, any two numbers here. Uh, so, uh, this would be the initial condition, and this is my system of ODEs. Uh, and I can use Laplace transform in, in this case in the same way as we used it to solve uh, individual ODEs. Uh, so I can set capital X to be uh, the Laplace transform of little x and capital Y to be the Laplace transform of little y. And then if I take transform of the first equation in my system of ODEs. Uh, so transform both equations. Uh, so for the first one, I'm going to get transform of a derivative is s times transform of the function without a derivative minus value of the function at 0, so x of 0 is x0. Transform is uh, linear, right? So transform of the left side of the equation must be the same as the transform of the right side of the equation, and as I said, transform is linear, so transform of 2x plus 3y is going to be 2 times transform of x plus 3 times transform of y. Uh, and now if we transform the second equation, again, transform of y prime is sy minus the initial condition y0. And this should be equal to transform of the right-hand side. Transform is linear, so this is 2 times capital X plus capital Y. Uh, so transforming the initial value problem, we get the system of algebraic equations, uh, which we can solve for unknowns, uh, capital X and capital Y. Uh, so we can do that by uh, putting all unknowns on the left side and all knowns, known uh, numbers on the right side, and then solving a system. Uh, so if I move 2x plus 3y to the left-hand side of the corresponding equation, I'm going to get s minus 2 times capital X minus 3 times capital Y, move X0 on the right-hand side, and so that's uh, what the right-hand side is going to be. 
move to x plus y to the left hand side. So minus 2 capital X plus S minus 1 capital Y. Y0 goes to the right. So this is equal to Y0. And that's my system of algebraic equations. And I can solve it by eliminating, uh, let's say, one of the variables and solving for the remaining variable. Uh, so for example, if we multiply the first equation by 2 and the second equation by s minus 2, uh, we're going to get um, 2 times so 2 times s minus 2 capital X minus 6 capital Y equal to 2 x0, second equation by s minus 2, so minus 2 s minus 2 x plus s minus 1 times s minus 2 capital Y equal to s minus 2 times y0. Uh, right, so we do that, and then we can add two new equations that we got. Uh, x will cancel out, and then we have s minus 1 times s minus 2, capital Y minus 6 times capital Y on the right. And that is equal to 2 x0 plus s minus 2 y0 on the right. Uh, and so now this is just like uh, solving an inverse uh, problem for the Laplace transform as we have done already for a single function capital Y. So we solve this for capital Y and then we can take inverse transform. Uh, so I can combine two terms on the left. First of all, open the parenthesis in s minus 1 times s minus 2. That's s squared minus 3s plus 2. And there is also minus 6 capital Y equal to 2x0 plus s minus 2 uh, y0. Uh, now that is s squared minus 3s minus 4, capital Y, still equal to 2x0 plus s minus 2 uh, y0. Uh, then s squared minus 3s minus 4, I can write as s minus 4 times s plus 1 times capital Y equal to still the same thing, 2x0 plus s minus 2 y0. And so now I can divide both sides by s minus 4 plus times s plus 1. And we get capital Y out of this. And it's equal to 2x0 plus s minus 2 y0 over s minus 4 times s plus 1. All right. Okay, and so now we uh, have to simplify uh, this expression and take its um, inverse transform. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, we can write this, for example, in the following way. Uh, let's say, let's say we are going to write it as follows. Uh, well, actually, um, actually easier. We can do it like this. Uh, we can. Uh, I write this uh, by using partial fractions. Uh, so by using partial fractions, this is a over 
S minus 4 plus B over S plus 1. Uh, so that is going to be, once I put this on the common denominator, the right hand side is going to be A times S plus 1 plus B times S minus 4 over S minus 4 times S plus 1. Uh, so we have to have A times S plus 1 plus B times S minus 4. We have to uh, set this equal to 2x0 plus S minus 2y0, right? This should be true for all S. So in particular, we can simplify this equation by setting S equal to minus 1, right? If S is equal to minus 1, then on the left, we'll have B times minus 1 minus 4 equal to 2x0 plus minus 1 minus 2y0. So minus 5b is uh, 2x0 minus 3y0. And so we can solve this for b. So b is equal to minus two-fifths x0 uh, plus, because we're dividing by minus 5, plus three-fifths y0. Uh, do a similar thing to determine a. If we set s equal to 4, then we have 5a. Uh, s minus 4 is 0, so there is no b equal to 2x0 plus 4 minus 2y0, which is 2x0 plus 2y0. And so we can solve for a, just dividing by 5. five. So a is 2 fifths x0 plus 2 fifths y0. Uh, and so this gives us capital Y. So capital Y is two fifths x zero plus two fifths y zero times one over s minus four plus b. So b again is minus two fifths x0 plus 3 fifths y0, and that is times 1 over s plus 1. All right, so this is our y. How do we get x? We go back, and uh, we can use, for example, the second equation to figure out capital X, right? Because we can solve the second equation for x. Uh, so that second equation then is going to give us, so then, from that second equation here, let's copy it. So because of this, We can solve for x. Capital X is uh, going to be equal to 1 half, right? So we move 2x to the right, move y0 to the left, and then divide by 2. So it's 1 half s minus 1 times capital Y minus y0, right? Uh, so what we have then is that this is one half 
uh, then two fifths x zero plus two fifths y zero uh, s minus one times y is s minus one over s minus four. Uh, right, so that's the first part, s minus 1 times, of s minus 1 times y. The second part is going to be plus minus 2 fifths x0 plus 3 fifths y0 s minus 1 over s plus 1, right? So, so far I computed s minus 1 times capital Y. I still have to subtract y0 from this and that would be my capital X. And I'll see if we can simplify this further. So I don't want to transform s minus 1 over s minus 4 because I would not see anything like this in the table of transforms. Uh, if I see a fraction and the power of s on the top and the bottom is the same, uh, then before I find the inverse transform, I have to do a long division. Uh, and in this case, long division actually is fairly simple. The way to do it is to write minus 1 as s minus 4 plus 3. Right, because s minus 4 plus 3 is still s minus 1. And... Uh, then I can divide s minus 4 by s minus 4 to get 1. Uh, so plus, I can do the same thing for the second factor. So I have the factor itself. And then s minus, fun, s minus 1 over s, over s plus 1, I can write as s plus 1 minus 2 over s plus 1, then minus y0 again. And so now what is this? That's 1 half, again, the lengthy factor, and I can divide now by s minus 4 to get 1 plus 3 over s minus 4, and do the same thing for the second factor, and the second long division is going to give me 1 minus 2 over s plus 1, and then minus y0. And so finally, so I'm going to keep one half. Uh, I can distribute uh, this factor between these two terms. So the factor times one is just a factor itself. So factor uh, plus the same factor times three over s minus four. So copy, paste, uh, 3 over s minus 4, so I'll put 3 out, 1 over s minus 4, and this is with a plus sign. And now we can distribute in a second product here. Again, I have a factor times 1, so I can just write that factor. Uh, minus 2 times a factor. So minus 2 times this parenthesis. Right, so far I'm just doing algebra. I'm not doing anything uh, else here. Uh, so 1 over s plus 1. 
then minus y0, and that's it. Okay, and uh, so then let's see what we have gotten here overall. Uh, All right, so what do we have? We have two fifth of x zero. We have minus two fifths of x zero, so these are gone. We have two fifth of y zero plus three fifth of y zero. That is y zero. So those are gone because you subtract y zero. And so then, uh, how much is left? We have one half times this minus one half plus one half times that. And that is going to give you uh, three halves times a factor. Uh, times one over one over s minus four. Uh, minus two times one half minus the second factor. Times one over s plus one. Okay, and so that is uh, our capital X. So, uh, to finish this, little y of t must be an inverse transform of capital Y of S. So that's an inverse transform of, let's see, where is capital Y? It's all this mess up here. Uh, it's a mess, but uh, most of it actually are constant numbers, right? Uh, and given the initial conditions, this is a constant, and that is a constant, so I can pull those contents, and by linearity of Laplace transform, this should be the same thing as this constant times L inverse of 1 over S minus 4. Uh, plus a second constant times L inverse of 1 over S plus 1. And then just by looking at the table of Laplace transforms, you immediately see that this is e to the power 4t and this is e to the power minus t. So what we get is 2 fifths x0 plus 2 fifths y0 times e to the 4 t plus minus 2 fifths x0 plus 3 fifths y0 times e to the minus t. Uh, and similar thing for x, so x is L inverse of capital X, which is L inverse of our capital X is uh, the expression right here. So copy, paste again. Uh, and just like it was a case with capital Y, this is a most of this stuff are constants. Uh, so what we're going to get is 3 halves, 2 fifths, x0 plus 2 fifths, y0, inverse transform 
of 1 over s minus 4 uh, minus minus 2 fifths x0 plus 3 fifths y0 inverse transform of 1 over s plus 1. Uh, so apart from constants, is that she's still inverse transforms that give us exponentials. So we have 3 halves, 2 fifths, x0 plus 2 fifths, y0, e to the power 4t, again from the table of transforms, minus minus 2 fifths, x0 plus 3 fifths, y0 e to the minus t. All right, so uh, then these are solutions of, this is a solution of our initial value problem. x of t is, we're going to write the expression in a moment, y of t, again, we'll write the expression in a second here. So this is our x, and this would be y. All right, so that's a general solution. I mean, that is a solution of the initial value problem given x0 and y0, we should be able to uh, compute uh, these expressions here. Uh, but also, also, let's actually simplify that before I say anything else. So we have here is 3 halves times 2 fifths times 2 fifths. So I can factor out 2 fifths out of here. 3 halves times 2 fifths is going to be 3 fifths. So I can rewrite this expression as uh, oops, 3 fifths of x0 plus y0. times e to the 4t, etc. And I can do something similar in the second expression, where I have 2 fifths, a factor of 2 fifths, both here and here, so I can pull it out. And so that will give us 2 fifths uh, of x0 plus y0. Right, this is just a minor simplification, but uh, what I can see also here then is going to be this. So right now I'm writing the solution of the initial value problem to system of two first order radii's and the initial conditions x of x, x of zero equal to x zero, y of zero is, is zero is equal to y zero. But x zero and y zero, like I said before, can be whatever you want them to be. So in a sense, the circle thing here, the circle expression, gives me all possible solutions of my initial uh, value problem. So in fact, this should be a general solution of my OD. Uh, and how do I see that? I see that x0 plus y0 is the same constant that appears in the first equation and the second equation. And minus 2 fifths x0 plus 3 fifths y0 is the same constant that appears in the second equation. And uh, so then I can try to introduce the following notation. I can call x0 plus y0 uh, 5 c1. And I can call minus 2 fifths x0 plus 3 fifths y0 c2. And if I do that, so again, this is a solution of the initial value problem. 
Uh, so if I introduce this notation with C1 and C2, then x of t is going to be 3 fifths times 5 C1, 3 C1 e to the 4 t minus C2 e to the minus t. And y of t will be 2 fifths times 5, 2 C1 e to the 4 t plus C2 e to the minus t. Right, so that is a solution which involves two unknown constants in a sense, x0 and y0 are also two unknown constants, but here I'm writing this in a similar way as how we did it uh, previously with a uh, single ODE. So this I can think of as a general solution of the system of IDEs. Again, I am going to emphasize that this is just interpretation. This also is a general solution, except that it's written in such a way where C1 and C2 uh, are expressed in terms of the initial conditions x0 and y0. Uh, here, uh, they're just two constants, C1 and C2. Uh, so by using a Laplace transform, I'm able to find the solution of my equation. Now let's um, also uh, try to relate this to what we have done uh, in the last lecture. Uh, so let's note uh, that the original uh, initial value problem Uh, can be written in the matrix vector form. Uh, so how am I going to write it in the matrix vector form, if you recall? Uh, what is x prime, y prime? That's uh, vector x, derivative of the vector x. And the right-hand side is a matrix times a vector. So... I should be able to write it in this way, uh, x, y, vector x, y prime is equal to the matrix A, again, the matrix A that consists of the coefficients of the ODEs 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, oops, 2, 3, 2, 1 times x, y, right? Uh, so that is my equation. And the initial condition, again, I can write in the vector form, x, y at the point 0 would be equal to a vector x0, y0. Uh, and then the solution, I should also be, write, be able to write in the form of a vector. So I have to go back to the expression right here. Uh, so how can I write it? I can write it as follows. I can write it as, uh, so there is a common factor of one fifth x zero y zero e to the four t in both uh, equation for x of t and equation for y of t. So what is my... Uh, let's write it first like this. So x of t, uh, y of t, the solution vector. So then... solution in a vector form uh, is going to look like this, and I need to copy uh, the stuff from upstairs from here.
so I'll see vector that vector function that looks like this. And I'm going to try to simplify it a bit. Uh, so I can write this vector as a sum of two vectors. Three fifths x0 plus y0 e to the 40, two fifths x0 plus y0 e to the 40, plus a second vector uh, minus minus two fifths x0 plus three fifths y0 e to the minus t, and then the same thing but with a plus sign down here, minus two fifths x0 plus three-fifths uh, y0 times e to the minus t. Right, so uh, a vector is a sum of two vectors. Then, and then within this vector, like I mentioned before, I have a common factor of one-fifth x0 plus y0 e to the 4t in the first component and in the second component. So that's a scalar that I should be able to pull out. So, one fifth x zero plus y zero e to the four t is a common scalar factor, and once I pull it out, I'm going to get three two left. Uh, plus, there is also a common factor here. In fact, it's everything uh, except for the sign, right? Minus sign in the first component plus sign in the second component. So I can just uh, copy that. And what I have remaining is a vector minus one, one. Right, and so that is going to be my solution to the system of ODEs. It's a constant vector times some function of t plus another constant vector times another function of t. And that's how those solutions are going to look like uh, always. Uh, one more thing. So one-fifth uh, of x0 plus y0 I call c1 up here. And minus two-fifths x0 plus three-fifths y0 I call c2. So... I can write this also as c1 e to the 4t times 3, 2 plus c2 e to the minus t times minus 1, 1. And that is the general solution. Of the th of the system of ODEs, but now written in a vector form. So uh, now you can see even better the relationship with a single ODE, uh, let's say second single, single second order ODE. Remember that. Solution in that case looked like a constant times exponential plus no, another constant times another exponential, right? In, at least in one case, the solution looked like that. And what we're seeing here is uh, basically the same thing, that it, is, that it is an exponential function times a constant, except the constant now is a vector, plus another exponential function times another constant, which is another vector. Uh, the interesting thing is that two vector constants are not really uh, completely, uh, they're not two generic vector constants. There are two vectors, but only two constant scalars are involved, C1 and C2. Uh, so two vector constants are uh, 
not fully junior, right? I do not have a vector C1 with two independent components here. I have a vector which is parallel to 3, 2, and here I have a vector which is parallel to minus 1, 1. Uh, anyhow, we don't have to discuss, don't have time to discuss uh, why the solution looks this way, but I just want to point uh, the connection to what we saw for individual second order IDEs before. Uh, and let's do one or two more examples of this. Uh, and the next example is going to be uh, is going to be this. Uh, let's try to solve an equation. So find the solution. of the following initial value problem. Uh, let's say uh, x prime is equal to 3 minus 18 2 minus 9 x and maybe x of 0 is equal to 1 0 okay so in this case I'm not solving an initial value problem for generic uh, initial conditions but for specific initial conditions 1 0 uh, so again, we want to use Laplace transform, uh, and first we need to write down the two system of equations. Uh, so if x is a vector which has components x1 and x2, then the system of ODEs will look like x1 prime, we're doing a matrix vector multiplication, 3 minus 18 times a vector x1, x2 is 3 x1 minus 18 x2. x2 prime is 2 x1 minus 9 x2. And uh, x1 of 0 again. Now from here, right? First component uh, at zero is equal to one, and the second component at zero is equal to zero. Uh, so now we take Laplace transforms of two equations. Uh, Laplace transform of the first equation, Laplace transform of x1 prime, should be equal to 3 Laplace transforms of x1 minus 18 Laplace transforms of x2. Uh, that is uh, bilinearity of Laplace transform again. Uh, Laplace transform of x2 prime is 2 Laplace transforms of x1 minus 9 Laplace transforms of x2. Uh, what is that going to be uh, is Laplace transform of a derivative uh, of x1 is x as x1 prime minus x1 at 0. x1 at 0 is 1, so minus 1. And that is three transforms of x1 minus 18 transforms of x2. Then Laplace transform of x2 prime is sx2 
minus x2 at 0, but x2 at 0 is equal to 0, so there is nothing uh, that you need to subtract here, and this is equal to 2 transform of x1 minus 9 transform of x2. So we now got two system, a system of two algebraic equations, linear algebraic equations for x1 and x2, what we should be able to solve. And uh, let's put all unknowns, as usual, on the left side and all knowns on the right side. So we have s minus 3 times x1. Uh, by the way, there is no prime here. Sorry. Uh, s minus 3 x1 plus 18 x2 equal to 1, and then 2x1 uh, minus s plus 9 x2, that is equal 0. Right, so the second equation I simply took sx2 and I moved it to the right. Okay, and so now we can solve this for um, x1 and x2. For example, from the second equation, we have that x1 is going to be 1 half s plus 9 times x2. Uh, sub this into the first equation. Um, Uh, we're going to get uh, one, uh, s minus 3 times 1 half s plus 9 x2, right? Because x1 is 1 half s plus 9 times x2 plus 18 x2 equal to 1. And now that is... Uh, an equation for x2 that we should be able to uh, solve. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 and uh, uh, distribute s minus 3. Uh, so multiply out s minus 3 and s plus 9. So then s square minus uh, 3 plus 9 plus 6 s minus 27 x2. Uh, let me make sure s square plus 9s minus 3s minus 27. I multiply by 2, so plus 36x2 equal to 2. Uh, combine things on the left, s square plus 6s minus 27 plus 36 x2 equal to 2. Uh, this is s square plus 6s plus 9 x2 equal to 2. Uh, and if we solve for x2, it is 2 over s square plus 6s plus 9. And s square plus 6s plus 9 is nothing but s plus 3 square. Right, so now if x2 is like that, we should be able to find x1. We know that x1 has this form. So x1 is again 1 half s plus 9 times x2 so that is 1 half 
s plus 9 times 2 over s squared plus or s plus phi quantity square so 2 cancels out and this is s plus 9 over s plus t square okay so we found x1 we found x2 so now we should be able to find the inverse transforms so therefore little x1 is going to be inverse transform of s plus 9 over s plus v square uh, to find this inverse transform uh, again we need to uh, do a long division uh, and uh, either we do a long division or we express s plus 9 uh, over s plus v square uh, as a sum of partial fractions which is the same thing in this case so this would be the same thing as uh, now the denominator is s plus 3 square uh, so that uh, indicates that if you look at the table of uh, Laplace transforms you don't see s plus 3 square in there but you see something with s square uh, so if you see s square that means that um, uh, whenever you encounter s plus 3 square what you have is a shift by 3 so we have to use a first translation theorem uh, so we have to express everything uh, in our uh, formula in terms of s plus 3 so that we can use a first translation theorem right remember what i'm talking about is this that if you take a laplace transform of f of t times e to the a t this is the same thing as Laplace transform of f of t but should be evaluated at s minus a uh, so then if I want to take the inverse transform of um, a function capital F evaluated at s minus a what do I need to do? Uh, I will need to get rid of s minus a, right? And replace it by e to the at. So this should be e to the at. And then I simply take inverse transform of capital F of s. All right, so what am I going to get here or how am I going to use this here uh, I'm going to use this in the following way uh, I'll rewrite the entire thing as I said as a function of s plus 3 so s plus 9 is s plus 3 plus 6 divided by s plus 3 quantity square uh, so then I compare it to the inverse form of the first translation theorem. I want to take inverse transform of capital F, which is shifted by A. So in this case, my capital F is shifted by minus 3. So then this should be the same thing as an exponential. E to the AT, I shifted by minus 3. Uh, so then I have an exponential e to the minus 3t and then I have to multiply that by the inverse transform of the unshifted function and for the unshifted function I have to replace s plus 3 by s everywhere so s plus 6 divided by s squared and uh, again by properties of the inverse transform so this is now e to the minus 3t and by properties of inverse transform this is inverse transform of 
s over s squared, which is 1 over s, plus 6 times inverse transform of 1 over s squared. And the inverse transform of 1 over s is 1, and inverse transform of 1 over s squared is t. And so that gives me my x1. So, because, again, this is the same as a statement in the inverse form. Uh, and so I can do the same thing for x2, right? Uh, x2, little x2. Uh, is, uh, okay, let me write it in the same way as uh, x1. Little x2 is going to be the inverse transform of 2 over s plus 3 squared. And we apply the same logic. If I look at the table of inverse transform, I don't see 2 over s plus 3 squared, but I would see 1 over uh, s plus, yeah, 1 over s squared. So how do I get there? So 2, first of all, I can factor out. So 2 times inverse transform of 1 over s plus 3 squared. And again, I see 1 over s squared, don't see 1 over s plus 3 squared. 1 over s plus 3 squared is a translation of 1 over s squared by minus 3. So that means that I'm taking inverse transform of a guy like that. It's inverse transform of some capital F that is translated by A. So what does the first translation theorem say? I can drop minus A from here at the expense of multiplying by E to the AT, and I just take an inverse transform of untranslated function. So this should be the same thing as twice E to the minus 3T times inverse transform of now 1 over s squared, right? The cost of uh, removing a translation is a multiplication by the exponential. And then inverse transform of 1 over s squared is going to be just t. And so what we get then is that our solution, which is a vector x1, x2, is going to look like this. x1, again, is e to the minus 3t. And I'm going to distribute uh, 1 plus, actually I'm not going to distribute, 1 plus 6t, right, that's x1, and x2 is 2 uh, e to the minus 3t times t. Uh, just like I did um, with the previous example, I can maybe simplify or re rewrite this in a different form. First of all, there is a common factor of e to the minus 3t in both components of this vector, so I can pull e to the minus 3t out, and I'll have 1 plus 6t, 2t uh, left inside. And then that, in turn, this vector, I can write as a sum of two vectors. One is going to be 1, 0, plus 60, 2t. And from 60, 2t, I can factor out t. So e to the minus 3t, then 1, 0 plus t times 6, 2. So again, you see that the form of a solution is kind of reminiscent 
of the form of a solution that we uh, saw for single ODEs, right? We have an exponential times a vector plus exponential times t times another constant vector, right? In a previous case for a single ODE, this structure of solution arose when we had the characteristic equation which had only one solution. And it is a kind of the same situation here, right? Because if we look at uh, denominators of x2 and x1, they were complete squares of s plus 3. It was not a product of uh, two factors like s minus 1 times s plus 2. It was s plus 3 squared. And uh, again, right, so there is a some relationship between systems of in fact, we showed last time that there is a specific relationship between the system of two first order ODEs and a second order ODE, uh, both of which are linear, uh, that one can be transformed into another uh, by taking derivatives and eliminating things. And this is just another manifestation of that, that you still see solutions of similar form uh, when you work with systems. All right, and uh, one last example. Let's now try uh, the following. Let me see. A particular example of what I want to do. Okay, so let's say we have a following system now, x prime is going to be 6 uh, minus 1, 5, 4, times x, uh, and uh, let's make produce the following initial conditions. Initial condition x of 0 is going to be, let's try now, 0, 1. Uh, and so again, I want to find the solution of this IVP. Uh, by using Laplace transform. All right, so first we uh, produce uh, the equations. So if x is a vector with components x1 and x2, then x1 prime should be 6, x1 minus x2, x2 prime should be 5x1 minus 4x2, that's OD, and the initial condition x1 of 0 is 0, x2 of 0 is 1. We now use Laplace transform. So Laplace transform of x1 prime must be 6 Laplace transforms of x1 minus Laplace transform of x2. And Laplace transform of x2 prime should be 5 Laplace transform of x1 minus 4 Laplace transform of x2. Okay, so uh, Laplace transform of a derivative of x1 prime is S capital x1 minus x1 of 0, but it's 0, and that is 6 uh, times capital x1 
minus capital X2. Uh, and then as X2 prime, SX2, the delete of X2 prime, is SX2 minus X2 at 0, which is 1, and that is 5 X1 minus 4 X2. Right, so this is our system of algebraic equations. So again, like in the previous case, uh, we should be able to solve it uh, to find x1 and x2. Uh, from the searched equation, I can determine x2 in terms of x1. So x2 is going to be uh, s minus 6 times x1. And then if I use a second equation, uh, I can find, OK, so x2 can be determined in terms of x1. Uh, from the second equation, I'll have that uh, 5x1 uh, actually let me just simply sub into the second equation So we have s times s minus 6 x1 minus 1 equal to 5 x1 minus 4 and x2 is s minus 6 x1. All right, so uh, everything with x1 I can move to the left. And at the same time, I can open the parentheses. Uh, well, we'll open the parentheses in a second. So everything with x1 goes to the left. And then we have s times s minus 6 minus 5 plus 4 times s minus 6 times x1. Minus 1 goes on the right and becomes plus 1. And now simplifying, s squared minus 6s minus 5 plus 4s minus uh, 24 times x1 equal to 1. Now let me see if I'm doing this correctly. Uh, Ba, ba, ba. Yes, actually, I did make a mistake here. So equal to minus s minus 6, right? Because minus x2 is that. Uh, so that will give us minus sign here and the plus sign here. So minus and then this is minus. So minus s squared plus 6s minus 4s plus 24. All right, so um, this is still fishy. Uh, just give me a second, I will try to figure out if I'm doing something incorrectly here. Okay, 6 minus s.
Okay, so there is one more boo boo. Uh, so plus 4x2, that was plus. So this is plus. This is plus. And then that is minus. And this is plus. So plus and minus again. And so hopefully this is correct. Uh, so then minus s square uh, plus 6s plus 4s plus 10s minus 29 times x1 is equal to 1. Uh, and I'm going to divide by this factor to get x1 out. So we find that x1 is 1 over minus s squared uh, plus 10s minus 29. Or if I pull minus sign out, minus 1 over s squared minus 10s plus 29. Uh, and if this is x1, well, then I can also find x2. x2 was minus s minus 6 times x1. Uh, so this should be okay, minus s minus 6 times x1. So this should be s minus 6 over s squared minus 10s plus 29. Hopefully this is correct. Uh, and so now we should be able to find uh, a little x1 and little x2. So little x1 is the inverse transform of minus 1 over s squared minus 10s plus 29. Uh, and of course, minus I can pull out, so minus L inverse of 1 over S square minus 10S plus 29. Uh, so if I have 1 divided by a quadratic, uh, then of course I have two options. Either I can factor out a quadratic, or if I cannot factor it out, uh, then my only recourse is to use uh, is to complete the square. Uh, and in this case, if you try to factor this out, you'll fail. So you do have to complete the square. And the way you complete the square, you take one half of the coefficient in front of uh, s, in this case minus 10, and you add half of that square, and you subtract half of that square. So s square minus 10s, minus 10 over 2 is minus 5 squared, so it's plus 25, uh, plus 29 minus 25, that gives us extra 4, and so that's it. So then we end up having minus L inverse of 1 over s square minus 10s plus 25 is s minus 5 quantity square plus 4 and uh, that's it. Uh, now what is that? Uh, again, if you look at the table of transforms, you will not see anything like this. The closest thing that you will see is going to be uh, a over s square plus a squared. So once again, we ended up being shifting uh, the transform by 5 now. So if I remove the shift, that gives me an exponential outside, just like in the previous example. So I get minus e to the what's exponential. I translate by 5, 
so it's e to the 5t, then L inverse of untranslated function, so it's 1 over s squared plus 4. And uh, if again, if you look at the table of transforms, you'll see that the transform of sine is a over s squared plus a squared. So if I have 2 on the top here, then I'll be good because then it would be inverse transform of that is going to be sine. By linearity of a transform, if I put 2 on the top inside the transform, to compensate I have to put 1 half in front of the inverse transform, and so this will give me minus 1 half e to the 5t, and now uh, inverse transform of 2 over s squared plus 4 is sine of 2t. Uh, let's try to do something similar for x2. x2 is an inverse transform of s minus 6 over s squared minus 10s plus 29. Uh, to take this inverse transform, you do again the same thing as we just did. You have to uh, either complete the square or factor out the quadratic on the bottom. Uh, you already know that uh, you have to complete the square there. So this should be the inverse transform of s minus 6. And completion of a square works in the same way. s minus 5 squared plus 4. Uh, so again, I have to use the first translation theorem. That means that I have to write everything inside here as a function of s minus 5, right? because that's my translation of the denominator, and then remove the translation. So I should be able to express s minus 6 as s minus 5 minus 1, right? So that's the inverse transform of s minus 5 minus 1 s minus 5 squared plus 4 uh, then remove the translation that will cause an exponential e to the 5t right because I remove the translation by 5 uh, in the transform uh, so exponential appears in front of the inverse transform and translation is removed from the expression inside so when I do that, s minus 5 has to be replaced by s everywhere. So then I have s minus 1 over s squared plus 4. Uh, and finally, so what is that? Uh, again, I can use the linearity of a transform inside. Uh, I can write... Uh, the fraction s minus 1 over s squared plus 4 as s over s squared plus 4 plus 1 over s squared plus 4. So let's uh, do it this way. So s over s squared plus 4 uh, minus um, okay, I forgot the L inverse here times L inverse of this minus L inverse of 1 over S squared plus 4. Right, so first of all, the fraction can be written as a difference of two fractions. And then uh, linearity of the inverse transform allows me to split this into uh, the difference of two inverse transforms. And then uh, one other thing that I can look with, do with the second transform, this is basically the same transform as we just did a moment ago. Uh, I don't see 1 over s squared plus a squared in the table, but I see a over s squared plus a squared. In this case, a is 2, so multiply by 2 and divide by 2. And then the first guy from a table is an inverse transform of cosine, and the second guy is an inverse transform that gives you sine. So e to the 
5t, and then cosine 2t minus 1 half sine of 2t. And uh, so then overall, our vector, solution vector for the ODE is going to be a vector that consists of two things, minus one half e to the 5t sine 2t, and then e to the 5t cosine 2t minus one half e to the 5t sine of 2t if I distribute the exponential. And then, just like we did before, let's write this uh, in the following way. Uh, so I have sine that appears both here and here. So I will write a separate vector using sines uh, and another vector by using cosines. So minus 1 half e to the 5t sine 2t, and again, minus 1 half e to the 5t sine of 2t in the, uh, in the second component, plus there are no cosines in the first component, and then e to the 5t cosine 2t in the second component. So then uh, in the first vector I can factor out everything, minus 1 half if to e to the 5t sine 2t, And what remains of my vector is a constant 1, 1, constant vector 1, 1. And in the second case, I factor out e to the 5t cosine 2t, and what remains is a vector 0, 1. So once again, this looks like a third case uh, of our uh, second order ODEs where we had two um, complex conjugate solutions. In that case, you got exponential times cosine times one constant plus exponential times sine times another constant. So the structure again in the solution to our system of ODEs reminds us of what we saw uh, for uh, second order linear ODEs. All right, and that concludes the last lecture of this course. So the last uh, subject that you have to be able to do is to solve these um, linear systems, uh, just two by two linear systems of so first order ODEs, homogeneous ODEs uh, that I give you examples here, you should be able to solve uh, those. All right.